So this video is going to be discussing the first topics of the Year 12 IAS Chemistry course from Edexcel. Um, we're going to be looking at the formula equations and amount of substances topic and focusing on the equations and reaction types. So we're going to be looking at the definition of our key terms that we need for this topic, how to write out balanced and full ionic equations, including our state symbols, and then how we can relate these to simple test tube experiments to show as examples of displacement, reactions of acid and precipitation reactions. So let's start off by looking at our key terms. I'm just going to go through these very quickly because you should know all of these from not only GCSE, but also key stage three. So an element is going to be a substance that contains uh, the same type of atom. Now remember, not every atom is going to be identical because you will have different isotopes, but every atom in the element will contain the same number of protons. So they're all going to have the same atomic number. Atoms being the smallest particle of a chemical element that has properties of that element. So we know that they're made up of protons, neutrons and electrons. Um, and atomic structure will be discussed further in topic two. So we're just going to move on from that. Molecules being two or more atoms that are bonded together. So typically covalently bonded and they can be two of the same elements. So a diatomic element. Remembering our um, seven diatomics that are available on the periodic table. Or it could be atoms of two or more different elements. And we call those compounds. So those are substances containing atoms of different elements that are being combined together. They may have two or three atoms or they could contain hundreds or thousands. And we can also get compounds being formed ionically of our ions of opposite charges. And we'll cover that again in topic three when we're looking at bonding. Just a quick reminder about what an ion is. That's a substance that has lost or gains an electron and it has a charge. So we can either have positive ions, which are known as cations, or negative ions, which are known as anions. Um, some other key terms that you've probably met before. So if we're talking about monatomic substances, that is, means it is made up of one single atom. If they are diatomic, it is made up of two atoms. Or if they've got several atoms, we can call them polyatomic. Poly just meaning many. Now at A-level chemistry, you're expected to be able to write chemical and ionic formula. You're expected to be able to balance a chemical equation, use the correct state symbols, use the correct arrow. So is it reversible, which would give you your double-headed arrow, or irreversible, which would give you your single-headed arrow. And also to write half and full ionic equations with and without spectator ions. And I'm not going to go through these in much detail because, again, you've covered all of this in IGCSE. But if you use pages 6 to 8 in the A-level textbook, you can practice these. So let's have a look at the different types of reactions. Firstly, we're going to look at the reactions of acids, and there are four main lab acids that you have to know. So there's hydrochloric acid, or HCl, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, nit nitric acid, HNO3, and phosphoric acid, which is H3PO4. These are going to come up all throughout this course as various different reagents or even catalysts depending on the reaction. So you have to make sure that you know all of the formulas. And you have to be able to write chemical and ionic equations for these reactions with lots of different types of bases. So metals, metal oxides, metal hydroxides, alkalis, metal carbonates, and hydrogen carbonates. So let's look at some of these examples. If we react an acid with a metal, we are going to make a salt plus hydrogen gas. So, for example, if we take magnesium and we add it into hydrochloric acid, we're going to make the salt magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. And remember, we can test for this because it burns with a squeaky pop. If we react it with metal oxides or metal, insoluble metal hydroxides, we're going to form a salt plus water. So the examples here is copper reacting with sulfuric acid to make copper sulfate or zinc hydroxide reacting with sulfuric acid to make zinc sulfate. Notice that we have our state symbols here. These are both solids um, because they are insoluble. If we have a soluble metal hydroxide, 
we call that an alkali. So of course we know that we can react acids with alkalis and we're also going to make a salt plus water. The only difference here is that we have the AQ state symbol. If we react it with a metal carbonate, this time we're going to make a salt plus water plus carbon dioxide. And we can test for that because it turns lime water cloudy. And the example that we have here is lithium carbonate reacting with hydrochloric acid to make our salt, our water and our carbon dioxide. Now hydrogen carbonates are very similar in the way that they react. You can see the difference here is that we have this hydrogen and HCO3 has a one negative charge as opposed to the CO3 which has a two negative charge. But we still react it in the same way to get the same general products where we get a salt, water and carbon dioxide. You also need to be able to recognise a displacement reaction. So a displacement reaction is happening when we have one element replacing the atoms of another element in a compound. So for example, we can have a redox reaction happening where we get oxidation and reduction, and this will be discussed more in topic eight. And you can have displacement happening with metals and aqueous solutions, and you can also have it happening with the halogens. You will have discussed these in GCSE when you did the reactivity series, and also when you did group seven. So if you're not sure on that, you might want to go back to your IGCSE notes and just have a quick look at them. But we'll go through them briefly here. So when we have an aqueous solution, react, a displacement reaction with a metal, we have got magnesium metal reacting with copper sulfate. Now the magnesium is higher on the reactivity series than copper, meaning it is more reactive. And in a displacement reaction, the more reactive metal takes the place of the less reactive metal. So we're gonna get magnesium sulfate being formed and copper metal. This will happen on a small scale and it does not require any energy. So we don't need to heat it or put electricity through. We can simply leave the magnesium and the copper sulfate and the reaction will continue on its own. If we have solid state reactions, so our two reactants being solid like aluminium and iron oxide, this requires a lot of energy to be put in and this particular reaction is known as the thermite reaction. So what we do is we heat it very very high temperatures in order to kick start the reaction and then we get a displacement again. Aluminium is higher than iron on the reactivity series. So it is therefore more reactive and will take the place of the iron. And the, this reaction is used to weld railway lines together. So if we have a look at a displacement reaction happening in a, a photograph, we can see that we have got a copper wire being added into a solution of silver nitrate. And as the reaction occurs, we know that uh, copper is higher than silver on the reactivity series. So we are going to get a displacement reaction happening. And we can see this because we get a buildup on the wire of silver metal. So that must mean that the silver metal is being displaced by the copper. And we see this buildup. And the colour of the silver nitrate solution also fades, sorry, also changes from colourless to blue because we are starting to form copper nitrate solution, which is going to be blue, as opposed to the silver nitrate, which is colourless. So by viewing these two observations, the buildup of the metal and the change in the solution, we can prove that a displacement reaction is taking place. To also see the thermite reaction, you can see that it is extremely exothermic because we're getting quite a lot of heat and fire being generated here. And it is an example of a displacement reaction. So we have the aluminium and the iron three oxide being positioned above the place where we want to join the two rails together. We then light a magnesium fuse and that gives off um, 
heat and it is a very exothermic reaction. This encourages the aluminium and the iron oxide to react, again, being very exothermic. And the molten iron that is formed in this reaction then fuses the rails together. So the molten iron passes down to here where the two railway, line, railway lines will fuse together. So displacement reactions can also happen with the halogens, again, where a more reactive halogen will displace a less reactive halogen. And remember, it goes that fluorine is the most reactive, followed by chlorine, and then bromine, and then iodine. So chlorine would be able to displace bromine, but bromine could not displace chlorine. You'll have covered that in IGCSE when you did the group 7 tip. Uh, topic. We will discuss this further in topic 8 when we look at oxidation and reduction reactions. But an example you can see is shown here. So we have chlorine gas displacing the bromine from the uh, potassium bromide compound and we're going to make potassium chloride and bromine as an element. So the electrons are being transferred from the bromide to the chlorine atoms and then they, to allow them to oxidize and the chlorine is reduced to chloride ions. But we will discuss that a little bit further in topic eight. So a precipitation reaction, again, you've covered this in IGCSE. This is where we get a solid forming and we can use them in chemical tests. Um, or we can use them actually to do to determine the coefficient in a chemical equation or in other words we can use it to balance a chemical equation. So the chemical tests that we can use precipitation reactions for are to test for CO2 because we get the white precipitate of calcium carbonate in the lime water. We can use it for sulfate ions because we get a white precipitate of barium sulfate and we can also use it from the halide ions because we get a precipitate of either white, cream or yellow of our silver halides. If you can't remember that, you might want to have a look back at topic 2H chemical tests from IGCSE that just summarises all of this. We will discuss this further in A-level, but it won't be until um, later on in the term. So just some examples of the precipitation reactions. So we have the formation of our calcium carbonate precipitate, or we can do a formation of a lead iodide precipitate, so forming a salt. And we can do this in different proportions and measure how much is being formed. And we can then use that to balance an equation. But again, we'll come on to a little bit more about those particular reactions later on at A level. So let's have a quick look at some past papers that could come up. Most of the time for this, they're going to be in your multiple choice. Remember, at A level past papers, you're going to get 20 multiple choice questions in every single unit, as well as your written questions. So for in the January 2019 paper, it was asking about dilute sulfuric acid being mixed with barium chloride. So H2SO4 being reacted with BaCl2. And what are we going to form? Well, we're going to form our salt. And we're going to form water. And you can see that we're forming a solid. This is the test for a sulfate. So this is a precipitation reaction because we are forming a solid from two aqueous solutions. So you can see C. From the January 2018 paper, writing an ionic equation for the hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide reaction. Well, if we look at HCl plus NaOH, that's an acid and an alkali, so we know we're going to form a salt plus water. Now this would be our chemical equation. We're looking for our ionic equation. So let's split everything down. We have H positive plus Cl minus 
gives you Na positive, so it reacts with Na positive and OH minus to give you Na positive, Cl minus and H2O. Of course, we want to remove our spectator ions, so the ones that do not take part in the reaction, so they are going to be the same on both sides, which is the sodium and the chlorine, and that leaves us with a hydrogen ion reacting with a hydroxide to give us water, so the correct answer is A. You can see that all the others contain spectator ions. So we don't want to have them in our ionic equation. And from the January 2017 paper, when 1.270 grams of copper is added to excess silver nitrate, 4.13 grams of silver is formed. And we want to work out the ionic equation for that. Now you can do this by checking the masses and looking at the number of moles, but we can see that the reactions are going to have a metal reacting with the silver in order to form a um, copper ion. Now, you, hopefully we remember from your GCSE that the um, silver is always 1 plus, so we can automatically get rid of B and C. Okay, because they're showing us as a divalent silver, so that can't possibly be correct. If we have our copper here reacting, we are going to have either the copper 2 ion or the copper 1 ion being formed. So we can check how much the number of moles of copper by doing 1.270 divided by 63.5 and then we can check that against the number of moles of the silver being formed which would be 4.316 divided by 107.9 when you compare those two values you should get the same answer and that would tell you that they are in a one-to-one -one ratio so you're sorry, that they are in a 2 to 1 ratio, so that is going to give you an answer of A. So this, the silver being monovalent and making two moles of the silver for each mole of copper. And you can see the answer is A. That's everything for equations and the types of reactions that you need to cover for topic one. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below and we hope to see you back on the channel soon.